Now, let's review the practical case about spurious correlation. To do this, you have to load the Gradle data file GDP versus melanoma EN GDT. In it, you have a time series for US GDP and the number of cases of melanoma in male patients living in Connecticut. The data is adjusted by age. The first step consists in looking at this data from the point of view of a regression model. We choose both variables, click, control click, right bottom, XY scatter plot. The X axis variable is chosen to be melanoma. We see a nice regression line with these coefficients. They happen to be the same number. This occurred by random. There is no reason for that to happen. Melanoma is in this axis, GDP is in this axis, and everything looks good. If we measure the degree of linear relationship through the correlation coefficient, right-click, correlation matrix, we find that the correlation between both variables is 0.93. It is significant, and you reject clearly the null that the value of the correlation coefficient is equal to zero. If you estimate a regression model, model, list squares, you choose GDP as dependent variable, melanoma as explanatory, you get a nice regression with all the coefficients significant and a very large R squared. Okay. Now, let's add to the data set the first difference of these variables. If you look at the variable GDP, you see that it is a trending line. If you look at the number of cases of melanoma, you see more or less the same. If you plot both series in a single graph, you see even a more expressive view of the data. What you have here is trending data, and this trend, which seems to be common to two, these two variables, but actually happen at random, explains the degree, the high degree of linear relationship. However, if you look at these two variables, again, by means of a time series plot on a single graph, you see that they have been detrended. So, when a regression line is trending, the first difference, that is the value that we get by subtracting to the current value, the value at time t, the value at time t minus 1, the first order difference is not trendy. We will discuss this issue in the lesson 6.1. If we detrend these variables in this way, we can plot the xy scatter plot. There is no apparent relationship. You can compute the correlation coefficient. It is not significant. And if you estimate by least squares the regression model, like we did with the data in levels, you get a regression in which the coefficients the slope of the regression is not significant and the R squared is very small. If we compare this regression with the previous one, model number one, we see that the slope that should have more or less the same value is substantially smaller. It is non-significant, as I told you, and the R squared deflated greatly. So, running the level regression, not in levels, but in first order differences, is a good test to detect for possible spurious correlation. 